Hello interwebs and welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts and review of the recent Audible adaptation of the Sandman graphic novel series by one, the only, Neil Gaiman. For those of you who don't know, Sandman was a comic book series that ran for about three to four years and was written by Neil Gaiman way back in the late 80s and honestly was one of the most critically acclaimed comic book runs of all time. Neil Gaiman, when he wrote it, absolutely knocked that series out of the park. It, it definitely was one of those comic book series kind of right up there with Watchmen and Alan Moore Swamp Thing that really felt at, like it was elevating the medium of comics at the time, like really saying like making a statement like comics are an art form, not just a sort of fun sort of thing for kids. And comics of all sorts are art forms, but it really sort of brought comic books, Sandman included in that, brought comic books into that conversation, uh, that level of sort of cultural conversation and awareness that it really didn't totally have before this point. So uh, for me, Sandman is absolutely one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. It definitely has some horror aspects, some sort of like gothic uh, Americana road trip sort of checking out uh, all of America vibes to it. It also kind of, it touches on so many other genres like African folklore, uh, all these different things, even comedy definitely gets in there as well. Well, it's an awesome, absolutely fantastic run of comics that you should 100% check out if you haven't read them. However, I'm talking about the Audible adaptation of these graphic novels, and I think that this project is one of the most unique projects I've ever seen done in audio drama. For those of you who don't know, I am a huge audio drama fan. I, I adore audio dramas. I don't talk about them all that much here on my channel just because they probably won't get as much uh, sort of play and help with the algorithm if I talk about them, but I, I really couldn't miss talking about this one because it, it really, uh, it, it was truly a standout project in my mind. Uh, first and foremost, how this project uh, is done is unlike a lot of audio dramas, which is kind of adapting the the thing for the medium so it really kind of changes the structure of the story uh, or like uh, massages things, that's just the nature of adaptation. For this actual audible adaptation, each episode, and they're done like kind of episodes, is actually taking one issue of the comic and adapting that exact issue, almost right down to the very same um, dialogue being used. And actually, Neil Gaiman talked about how he found his old scripts that he used to give to the artists to uh, to write and draw the comics back when he was writing Sandman initially. He found those old scripts and they used some of those lines from the script and actually creating the narration and descriptions for this audio drama. So really it is as close to a one-to-one -one parallel between audio drama and graphic novel that you could uh, ever do. And that's a truly unique project. And what I really love about it, it's something that Neil Gaiman uh, talked about in a recent interview with Collider, is that what he was trying to do with this drama was two things. One, make it accessible for people whose brains don't really work for graphic novels, maybe didn't give graphic novels a chance, or uh, felt kind of uh, overwhelmed by where to start with a graphic novel, so this would sort of give them a good in place to them, or maybe just reach a new modern audience with, uh, with the series. And then also, too, he wanted to... Um, not change anything, not update it. Like there are things, because this was written in the 80s, there are things that are in the graphic novel that are what we would call today problematic. Um, nothing like so egregious. I think Neil Gaiman has always been a very uh, well understanding um, and, and up to date and sort of progressive writer. I mean, he is still to this day standing up for trans rights. One of the f uh, fantasy writers that really came out in defense of trans rights after a certain other uh, fantasy author who shall remain nameless, let's just say, uh, didn't do that, decided to go maybe the opposite direction. But anyways, Neil Gaiman has always been very, um, very, very thoughtful in his writing and how he presents things. But again, it was 20, 30, 30 years ago, I guess at this point. And so there are some things in this graphic novel that don't always hold up, that aren't as, um, it might make, make someone balk a little bit if they were uh, reading it today. And he didn't really change that for this uh, adaptation. And he acknowledges that when he talks about it. It's like this is supposed to be a one-to-one -one adaptation of it. And I didn't want to change it. I didn't want to say, oh, here's the problems with it. Let's just fix it up. Because he is doing that with the Netflix adaptation of Sandman. Because there's going to be a Netflix series based on Sandman. And that's where he's going to do a lot of his changes. But for this graphic novel, it's sort of like preserving it. And sort of trying to give the graphic novels to a brand new audience audience or an audience that maybe wants to dive back into it like me. Um, and I think that that's actually a really admirable uh, and really uh, just very, um, the fact that he is conscious of these problems and is directly talking about them and is, uh, you know, wanting to put them front and center and say there are flaws with this 
still admittedly brilliant work, I think that I, I, would, I absolutely applaud any writer who is able to have that sort of self-awareness. Um, that, again, certain other uh, big-name fantasy writers maybe aren't as um, self-aware as they probably should be of their own writing. So I, I do applaud Neil Gaiman for that. So I, I really adore all that stuff behind the scenes of this adaptation. Uh, and the cast for this adaptation is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you have James McAvoy as Sandman, number one, who does a truly, truly standout job as uh, sort of capturing this sort of ethereal, that commanding, yet sort of distanced, and yet still can sometimes be very personable personality of Sandman. It is this really specific concoction of affable and sort of distanced and distant uh, character that James McAvoy really just nails on the head. Uh, and other actors too, like we also have, um, I'm blanking off the top, we have Michael Sheen as Lucifer who pops up in this as well. We have, I'm blanking on his name, but the guy who plays Gollum from the Lord of the Rings movies. Oh my gosh, uh, I'm I'm hating my, your, people in the comments are going to hate on me for, the, for forgetting his name because I absolutely adore him, uh, but I, for some reason I can't remember the uh, the actor's name who played Gollum in Lord of the Rings, King Kong. He was in uh, the Planet of the Apes movies. It's not coming to me. He's a great actor, and he plays uh, a role in this comic series. There's so many other big names in this uh, this Audible drama, and they all are just mwah, perfect perfectly done, uh, and, and I, I just can't uh, speak more highly of the cast in this uh, audio drama. I also think the uh, sound effects, the sort of music that they use for this comic book series is all perfect. It's sort of, I, I've been listening to this audio drama like right before bed, and it sort of gets me in this sort of like very horror, kind of creepy, yet still kind of feeling the magic and wonder of this world as well. And it's, it's sort of a perfect mood to listen to as you're, you know, going off to bed. And the fact that they are sort of adaptations of each individual issues means that I can listen to these in about 30 minute spurts instead of trying to like stop halfway through a story. It's very episodic. So I can listen to one before, right before I go to bed and then fall asleep. So this audio drama that I'm reviewing now is only the first 20 issues of the graphic novel, but they have stated that if this does well, uh, they do plan to do the entire graphic novel line, just going through every single one of them and finish out the entire graphic novel series as audio dramas. So please, for me, if, uh, if you like audio dramas, if you want to have a good jumping in place to a really interesting sort of like horror fantasy series, uh, but I have never really gotten into the Sandman, but like Neil Gaiman's writing elsewhere, uh, I would, I, I cannot recommend the audible audio drama of Sandman enough. It's a great way to catch yourself up on Sandman 2 before the Netflix adaptation eventually hits too. Uh, and please support it so that we can uh, maybe get the entire line of graphic novels as audio dramas. It would just be, it would, it would make me very, 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 very happy. So uh, absolutely adore it. Gets my highest recommendation for review. Uh, and I say you should definitely go out and listen to it. But what are your thoughts? Do you like the Sandman series? Did you uh, like the Audible drama? If you've listened to it, let me know that down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more weird off the cuff reviews like this one of Star Trek audio dramas, a bunch of geek culture, stuff like that. That's all right here on this channel. I also do two podcasts, one called Star Trek Behind the Lines and another called What the Frell. You can check those out. Uh, and don't forget to help me out over on Patreon. That really helps me support me doing like sort of lower interest topics like this, things that may not get really beefed up in the algorithm, but uh, something that I'm really passionate about and want to talk about. I'm only able to do this sort of stuff with your help over on Patreon, so please, uh, and you also get yourself some cool perks as well, so please, if you can, help me out over there. But regardless of all that stuff, whether you subscribe, help me out on Patreon, listen to the podcast, comment, all that stuff, don't worry about it, even if you don't, I hope that you, as always, live long and prosper. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, and a special thank you to Piston Twisted Garage, Ashley Allen Bokikio, Miranda Janelle, Eli Bergmas, Ashlyn Solstice, Christina Dalliance, Greg Gillum, Munir Amlani, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Wayne Twitchell, Alexander Miller, Ish the Mad, Buttoneer, Randy Thompson, Mouse Pounder, Gemshin, Susan Banks, Wellington Marcus, Lorena Mesa, Mari Neckar, John Stell, Gavin Robinson, Michael Beam, William Stewart, Jason Knott, Maeve, Stephen Clinard, Zach Cody, Subraxis, Wen Dizzle Bizzle, Dante St. James, Gretchen Badger, Polly Mina, Din Hagney, and Bree Beecher. Thank you so much to all of you. I could not do this without you, and I hope that you, as always, live long and prosper.